Have you ever wondered what happened to every first overall pick from the 2000s? Well, not every pick turned out to be what we all expected them to be, but I'm not going to lie, between the years 2000 and 2010, the NHL saw some elite, game-changing talent enter the league. So let's get right into it. Here's what happened to every first overall NHL draft pick from the 2000s. Rick DiPietro, 2000. After playing his last NHL game in the 2012-2013 season, Rick DiPietro got bought out during the 2013 offseason. However, he continues to receive payments from the New York Islanders until the end of the 2028-29 NHL season. DiPietro's situation is intriguing because the Islanders took a chance on him only three years after they drafted another goaltender in Roberto Luongo. They believed DiPietro had a bright future and decided to trade Luongo to the Florida Panthers. Unfortunately, things didn't unfold as expected. Expected to be the next top goalie in the NHL, DiPietro showcased his talent during the 2000 World Juniors and his college years at Boston University. He played a total of 318 games for the Islanders, occasionally displaying an average performance as a starting goaltender, but mostly struggling between the pipes. The situation worsened when the Islanders signed him to an enormous 15-year contract worth $67.5 million in 2006. However, due to a combination of his struggles, the team's difficulties, and a series of injuries that significantly impacted his playing ability, he was unable to meet high expectations associated with being the first overall pick. Ilya Kovalchuk, 2001. Kovalchuk, born in Russia, made NHL history as the first player from his country to be selected as the number one pick in the 2001 NHL draft by the Atlanta Thrashers. He began his NHL journey at the age of 18 in the 2001-2002 season, impressing with 51 points in 65 games, even though he missed the final 17 games due to a shoulder injury. During his early years in the league, he showed great promise and finished as the runner-up to teammate Danny Heatley in the voting for the Calder Trophy. Kovalchuk's goal-scoring abilities were evident as he scored 38 goals in his second NHL season and 41 goals in the 2003-2004 season, tying for the Maurice Richard Trophy as the league's leading goal scorer. After joining the New Jersey Devils in 2010, Kovalchuk signed a long-term contract that was later rejected by the NHL due to concerns about its structure and violation of the collective bargaining agreement. The contract was eventually restructured into a 15-year deal worth $100 million. In a surprising turn of events, Kovalchuk retired from the NHL just three years into this massive contract and returned to play in the KHL in Russia. He spent several seasons playing in the KHL before making another comeback to the NHL in the 2018 season with the LA Kings. Despite signing with the Kings, his time there was not successful. He was later picked up by the Montreal Canadiens, only to be traded one more time to the Washington Capitals. Unfortunately, Kovalchuk's NHL career did not end on a high note as his performance declined and he struggled to make an impact in the playoffs with the Capitals. This marked the end of his NHL career, concluding a journey that had its share of remarkable accomplishments and unexpected twists. Rick Nash, 2002. Let's take a look back to 2002 when the Columbus Blue Jackets had the third overall pick in the NHL draft. Their GM at the time, Doug McLean, made a bold move by trading with the Florida Panthers to secure the first overall pick, which is a rare occurrence in hockey. With the first pick in 2002, the Blue Jackets selected Rick Nash, who was highly regarded as the consensus number one pick by draft experts. Nash quickly proved his worth by making an impact just three days after signing his first contract, scoring in his debut game, and becoming the first player selected first overall since Eric Lindros to do so. Throughout his career, Nash showcased his exceptional talent and consistency, becoming a finalist for the Calder Trophy, awarded to the NHL's Rookie of the Year. Although he finished third in voting, he was named to the NHL's all-rookie team. Nash's performance on the ice was exceptional, and he played a pivotal role in defining the identity of the Blue Jackets, even during challenging times for the team. Rick Nash's success continued as he achieved several milestones, including leading the NHL in goals, earning two Rocket Richard trophies, and participating in All-Star games. However, the team's overall success faced ups and downs, and despite Nash's contributions, the Blue Jackets struggled to make significant progress. In 2010, Nash expressed his desire to leave the Blue Jackets, and he was eventually traded to the New York Rangers. He continued to excel with the Rangers and later played for the Boston Bruins before injuries brought his career to a close. Throughout his 
impressive career, Nash played 1,060 games and scored 437 goals, making him the greatest player in the history of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Marc-Andre Fleury, 2003. Marc-Andre Fleury, chosen as the first overall pick by the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2003, has consistently proven himself as one of the NHL's top goaltenders. He stands out among the small group of goalies who were selected that high in the NHL entry draft, being the most accomplished of all of them. Year after year, Fleury maintains a level of success that few can match, earning his place among the league's best. What sets Fleury apart is his ability to sustain his elite performance throughout nearly two decades of his pro career. This consistency is what makes him one of the best to have ever played the game. His impressive stats and achievements make a strong case for his future induction into the Hockey Hall of Fame. As of the 2023-24 season, Fleury boasts an impressive record of 511 wins, 315 losses, and 91 overtime shootout losses with a goals against average of 2.58 and a save percentage of 913. Notably, Fleury entered the league at the young age of 19, already reaching the pin while others were still developing in the minors. He truly hit his stride in his early 20s and consistently excelled ever since. His overall career stats speak volumes about his greatness, surpassing Hall of Famers Martin Brodeur, Patrick Waugh, and Terry Sawchuk in career save percentage. Alexander Ovechkin 2004 Ever since Alexander Ovechkin's remarkable rookie season in the NHL where he scored an impressive 52 goals, the question of whether he could surpass Wayne Gretzky's all-time record of 894 goals has been a topic of discussion for the past 18 seasons. As Ovechkin continues to get closer and closer to this illustrious record, it seems increasingly likely that he will achieve this feat, leaving no doubt that he is a true scoring sensation. What makes Ovechkin's journey even more extraordinary is the incredible alignment of circumstances that has allowed him to pursue this seemingly unattainable record. It is surreal to witness him achieving this milestone in the modern era of the NHL, where age is so often considered a limiting factor for players. However, Ovechkin has defied this notion, showcasing longevity and consistent production year after year, despite facing multiple challenges like lockouts and pandemic-shortened seasons. One of the most perplexing aspects of Ovechkin's career is his ability to maintain an exceptionally high level of production, even at the age of 37. Despite predictions from statisticians and hockey experts that his performance would naturally decline with age, Ovechkin continues to defy expectations. He had a slight dip in performance between the ages of 25 and 27, but other than that, he has consistently scored 40 or more goals each season, with only two exceptions, the 2016-2017 season and the shortened 2020-21 season due to COVID-19. What is truly astonishing is that Ovechkin shows no sign of slowing down. Instead of taking it easy as he approaches his late 30s, he continues to play with incredible intensity, throwing his body around and making impactful hits in every single game. In fact, he has thrown more hits than the next four leading NHL goal scorers combined, highlighting his determination and physical presence on the ice. Overall, Ovechkin's career is a testament to his unparalleled skill and dedication. His ability to sustain a high level of performance at his age is truly mind-boggling and makes him a marvel to watch on the ice. Sidney Crosby, 2005 Sidney Crosby's status among NHL legends is unquestionable with a legitimate argument placing him among the top three all-time NHL players. His remarkable talent, impressive pedigree, and ability to overcome mid-career injury challenges are just some of the factors that contribute to his greatness. Leading the Pittsburgh Penguins as captain for 16 years, Crosby shows no sign of slowing down, as you can see by his outstanding performance in the 2022-23 season, scoring 33 goals and amassing 93 points at 30 years old. Throughout his historic 18-year NHL career, Crosby has achieved nearly every major accomplishment with the Penguins, leaving only a couple of records to solidify his place in hockey history. Although he may not openly admit to aiming for the Penguins' all-time scoring record and a top-five spot in NHL history, Crosby's outstanding season in the 2022-23 season has brought him closer to these milestones. Playing in all 82 regular season games for the first time since the 2017-2018 season, Crosby maintained his remarkable consistency, averaging over a point per game for the 18th consecutive season. He also managed to widen the gap between himself and his career-long rival, Alex Ovechkin, finishing the year with a 17-point lead. Eric Johnson, 2006 
Chosen as the first overall pick by the St. Louis Blues in the 2006 NHL Draft, Johnson has faced some unfair criticism in comparison to other high-profile players taken after him like Jonathan Taves and Nicholas Backstrom. However, the label of bust doesn't do justice to his contributions to the game. After being traded to the Colorado Avalanche in February of 2011, Johnson remained loyal to the team through various challenges and changes, including the arrival of players like Landeskog and McKinnon. His patience and dedication were rewarded in June of 2022 when the Avalanche clinched their first Stanley Cup since 2001 by defeating the two-time defending champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning. As a testament to his commitment, Landeskog handed him the Stanley Cup first, recognizing his invaluable service to the team. Additionally, Johnson has made a mark on the international stage, earning a silver medal with the United States at the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. Throughout his career, Johnson has proven himself as a dedicated defensive player, prioritizing his team's success over personal glory. While not known for his offensive fireworks, he has managed to contribute with 25 or more points on 8 occasions. Standing at 6 foot 4 and 230 pounds, he fearlessly uses his physicality to shut down opposing forwards, reflected in his impressive plus 4 career rating. At 35 years old, Johnson recently signed a one-year deal with the Buffalo Sabres worth $3.25 million, which is a perfect match for a very young Sabres team. Patrick Kane, 2007 Patrick Kane has undoubtedly solidified his place as one of the greatest American-born players in NHL history. Throughout his career, his remarkable production has consistently ranked among the best in the league, playing a pivotal role in leading his team to three Stanley Cup victories as part of the Chicago Blackhawks. As of the end of the 2022-23 season, Kane stands tall as one of the only three American players to maintain an impressive average of at least one point per game across over 1,000 regular season games. He shares this elite status with the likes of Brett Hall and Joe Mullen. Furthermore, his 834 even strength points are tied with Mike Medano for the highest ever recorded by an American player. Kane's exceptional talent and accomplishments are further highlighted by being one of only eight American players to be drafted as the number one overall pick, and he became just the fourth American to receive the prestigious Conn Smythe Trophy. In the postseason, Kane's performance has been nothing short of outstanding, boasting a remarkable 0.97 point per game average, with only Kevin Stevens having a higher average. His impressive 138 career playoff points places him fifth among all American NHL players in history. Steven Stamkos, 2008 in the talent-rich 2008 NHL draft class, Steven Stamkos stands out as the most valuable player selected. Despite playing only a brief part in a playoff run during his first cup victory, his return and crucial goal in the final inspired the team to triumph in that series. In subsequent playoff runs, he continued to shine, amassing an impressive 37 points in 46 games. Stamkos is also a part of an elite group of four players who have reached 60 goals in a single season since 2000. His leadership skills are unparalleled and his loyalty to the team is evident except for that one near move to Toronto in free agency. Serving as team captain for a decade since taking over from Martin St. Louis in the 2013-2014 season, Stamkos just recently had a solid year as a 33-year-old center. Playing in all but one game, he finished the season with 84 points. In the playoff series against the Toronto Maple Leafs, he contributed two goals and two assists, displaying his continued productivity. With an already impressive career filled with accolades, Stamkos holds a prominent position in the league's history. He is a two-time league all-star and a two-time recipient of the Maurice Richard Trophy awarded to the NHL's leading goal scorer. More importantly, he also won two Stanley Cups. Stamkos boasts numerous team records including all-time leader in goals with 515, hat-tricks with 11, point shares with 133.7, and points with 1,056. Notably, he is the only player in Tampa Bay Lightning history to surpass the 1,000-point mark, achieving this feat on December 1, 2022. John Tavares, 2009 the 2009 NHL draft class had a wealth of talent with players like Matt Duchesne, Evander Kane, Victor Hedman, and Oliver Ekman-Larsen. 
However, the standout player among them was undoubtedly John Tavares. Throughout his career, John Tavares has been a model of consistency and a key presence on the ice. His ability to position himself effectively in front of the net, his fearlessness in battling for the puck, and his exceptional leadership skills have made a significant impact on his team's performance. Serving as the captain of his hometown, the Toronto Maple Leafs, is a massive responsibility and Tavares has risen to the challenge with great success. Despite some skepticism surrounding his lucrative long-term contract worth $11 million per year, Tavares has proven that he is worth every single penny to the Toronto Maple Leafs. He has been a productive player both in the regular season and the playoffs, showcasing his versatility and impact in all aspects of the game. While some may argue that adding individual awards to his resume would solidify his legacy, it is clear that Tavares' impact in the NHL goes beyond the need for personal accolades. His consistent performance and leadership have made him one of the league's most valuable players, and his contributions to the sport speaks volumes about his significance as a player. Taylor Hall 2010 Taylor Hall, the first overall pick in the 2010 NHL Draft, initially showcased some dazzling moments with the Edmonton Oilers when he joined them as an 18-year-old rookie. Despite playing on a talent-thin Oilers team, his production steadily improved over six seasons. However, it was after his trade to the New Jersey Devils in 2016 that Hall truly hit his stride. In the 2017-2018 season, he had a remarkable performance, scoring 39 goals and tallying 93 points, which earned him the prestigious Hart Trophy as the NHL MVP. Additionally, he led the Devils back into the playoffs after a five-year absence, making his first ever postseason appearance. As a middle six winger for the Boston Bruins, Taylor Hall consistently maintained a production level of around 60 points for a considerable period. However, he hasn't quite demonstrated the qualities of a player you would want to build a team around. Now, it's worth considering that his career trajectory might have been different had he not been a part of a struggling Oilers team in the past. Nevertheless, now as a member of the Chicago Blackhawks, Taylor Hall is presented with a distinct opportunity to play alongside the latest first overall pick and generational talent, Connor Bedard. This fresh chance with the Blackhawks opens up new possibilities for his career. Taylor Hall says, I'm excited to play a bigger role. I'm excited to show that I've grown. I'm excited to show that even at my age, I can still be a top line guy. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button.